Hello, I am the coach of the Pittsburgh Pichus, Double N, bring you guys here on the team building video. I did record a team building video when I was going to fight Miguel, but of course there's a DQ there. Call explanation for a video about that. And with Christian, I just didn't have much time that week, and <laughs> inevitably I got my ass bopped. So I just didn't really feel like doing a team builder then. Because it was early in the week, but this week um, I'm, I'll be going out of town here soon. So if I'm not responding to everybody's comments, whether in this video or when the actual UCL video goes up, I apologize. Because every week UCL videos, I love to hear criticism and I'm stay responding to the comments. But of course, if you guys can give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you already have it, and I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think. Why I brought what I brought to fight this week against the Toronto Toga Kiss. They are four and five this week, whereas we're five and four. So hopefully we can go six and four. <laughs> um, most team. Seems to be like, how do I, how do I put this? Uh, coming off as a, a cocky, arrogant asshole. Um, there's two. Okay, so against my team, there is two major threats on his team, two and a half, I should say. Um, and if I knock out two, and the half still stays there, I should be okay. So two and a half being one, the Volcarona, um, because that, that that sweeps me. Is and two, the Mega Swampert again sweeps me. I'm sure I have checks for it. I have the Zapdos for the Volcarona. I have the Azumarill uh, for the Volcarona. Uh, I have also as well... Uh, what else? I also have as well... Uh, Azumarill for the... Yeah, Azumarill for the Volcarona. Is that the Volcarona? And then Azumarill for the Swampert. And... Forges for the Swampert. And Slowking for the Swampert. Um, somewhat of Zapdos. This is more of a check than a counter. Because... Yeah, will not appreciate a nice bunch of waterfall especially more along waterfall stat waterfall in the rain so if i move those two away i should be okay and the half is the jirachi because jirachi doesn't need any and jirachi doesn't need anything he can legitimately just spam iron head or heart stamp which i know mo loves heart stamp uh to the point to where it won't even it'll literally defy all logic it will show you why the game needs no skill but essentially what i'm going to be doing is bring this lobby this week i'm basically made a level 50 without the mega mega stone um, just to be able to like, um, cause when I gen, when it was genned in and I wanted to see if all the stats were correct, uh, I had to obviously make it back to the regular form, but we're bringing a Megalopony again like we always do this week. I speed creeped Crobat, if you guys look at it here, um, essentially were Jolly 220 investments in speed. Should be able to outspeed a max speed Crobat. Now, obviously, he maybe he's not going to be running Timid, only if he's like a nasty plot set, which is actually very threatening to my team. Um, so I actually would urge him to bring a nasty plot set. It's very, very, very threatening to my team. It could do a lot of work to my team because if he goes like nasty plot, air slash, heat wave, and roost or some shit like that, um, not even that, he even could do roost slash sludge bomb. That's up to him. Um, it could be very, very, very threatening to me um, to the point to where what the hell could I do? You know, if he decides to go sludge bomb, he loses his recovery, but. Nasty plots, uh, Crobat would be very scary because if you look at my entire draft, just even uh, getting up one nasty plot free, uh, he's free to get off a Giga Drain slash Heat Wave under some thick fast. So I guess the Pill Swine could be able to take it. Um, Lantern would definitely stop it completely in his tracks. Air Slash, uh, Hoopa can guarantee take any one hit after one uh, plus two nasty plot. Uh, so can slow, can so can so <laughs> It's threatening, all right? It's threatening because. It 2 KOs a lot of things, you know? It doesn't obviously one-shot everything. It 2 KOs everything, or most of my things, to whereas then a lot of my things also take it as well, like Koopa, uh, Lantern, Pillow Swine. Uh, yeah, essentially. So, uh, Nasty Block Crowback could be very scary, but, you know, if he decides to go Nasty 3 attacks or Nasty Ruse 2 attacks, he loses his Hazard Remover. Because if you look at Mo's team, um, which I should just open it up in an image right now and I should let you guys know what it is because I normally don't put it I sometimes put it up on here but then this week um, I'm a little rushed um, I actually like I, <laughs> I'm a little rushed um, but he has Jirachi, Volcarona, Chansey, Crobat, Mega Swampert, Vol uh, Cobalion, Rotom Cut, Cinchino, Quillfish, Miltank, Lipard, and Mantine. Now, looking at his team, I know for a fact that he's going to definitely bring one of his fat pink Pokemon, uh, the Miltank or the Chansey. Because uh, if he doesn't bring that, my water types are so free. More Sloking than Azumarill because he could just bring the Rotom Cut or the Quillfish for Azumarill. Uh, but if I bring Sloking and he doesn't bring any of the two, this entire his entire team is Sloking City. Like, his entire team is literally Sloking City. Even if he decides to bring Mantine, I can just side Shock that and he can't do shit to me. So. If he doesn't decide to bring one of his tattoo mons, I'm literally safe. 
And Slowking should be very safe with that. But back to the Lopini. Uh, essentially, this Lopini is doing a considerable amount of work to his team. Even if he decides to bring these fat uh, pink Pokemon, um, I'm very much okay to just get off a Drain Punch off on them. The nice thing about it, too, is since he has Mons that purely rely on setup, um, Volcarona, Swampert, uh, Mill Tank, <laughs> Swords Dance, Quillfish, hey! Um, it looks as though I can literally get him a free sub on a setup, assuming a setup. And <clears throat> either that, that's one. That'd be crazy and ballsy though, because it's free. Um, or two, I get a free sub up on his cleric mons like the Mill Tank, the Quillfish, and the uh, Lipard and Chansey. Because uh, the thing about that is though, they decided to go for like a Thunder Wave or some shit like that, which I know, knowing Mo, I know that he'll run Thunder Wave in like 12 out of the 6 of his mons. <laughs> Uh, it allows me to get free substitute, and I basically can gain the HP back with Drain Punch. Because uh, looking at his team, I really only need Drain Punch. I don't need to dent that much within a fighting uh, stab type of motive with his team. Because he has a Crobat, he has a Volcarona, he has a Quillfish, he has a Mantine. Um, he has a Jirachi, which is neutral to it. So in theory, I really don't need High Jump Kick to be denting massive holes when he has Mons like that. He has a time for this in Mon Crobat, one of the best switch-ins to a fighting stab move. Crobat is literally one of the best switch-ins to a fighting stab move with the quad resist it, both poison and flying. If you didn't know poison is fighting, now you know. But I know for a fact that Crobat is 100% coming. Uh, if anything, I know, uh, I, here's how I look at it. I see Jirachi, Volcarona, Chansey, Slash Mill Tank, Crobat, Mega Swampert, and... Quillfish is exactly what I see. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if we brought Rotom Cut or uh, Cobalion. It'd be crazy if we brought Lyapar, but I feel like he only do that to get a Suicide Swissum type of thing, but that would hinder his Volcarona. But if you guys didn't know, fun fact, um, I think it was uh, Xenon or R Chisel that ran this really cool Volcarona back in B BW1 days where it was like a hurricane Volcarona in the rain, and his rain was busted. <laughs> that entire meta was so cool. Um, but yeah, he could do that. He could run Hurricane. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but that's the Lopini. Essentially, he should be doing well. I'll put the rest of the investments instead of HP. So, yeah, this Lopini is just going to be kind of a revenge killer. If anything, come in, fake out, return, leave out, or come in, fake out, sub, expecting something, get as much damage to the sub is broken, or the opponent dies, and then swap out. Um, essentially, stuff like that. You know? Sudden Talk does guaranteed pop to sub, though, so I'd have to, like, play my cards with that. He might even run counter as well. I could definitely see it. Still have to play my cards with that. Um, next up, Azumarill! Young Boy Bleezus! Young Boy Bleezus! I basically put enough speed investment to our mouse feeding a lot of his slow mons. Um, with, like, little to no speed investment. Um, what, like, the Chansey. The Man Time. <laughs> the Quillfish! That's it! Cause, uh, this freaking uh, this is slow as shit, so I do the most that I can with it, you know? I will definitely do the most that I can with it. Um, but knowing most of the people when they look at my Azumarill, they almost always, uh, think Belly Drum. Um, cause I started the season off very strong. Body bagging, destroying, and taking Jay's soul. Um, 5 0, week 1. Uh, with a belly drum Azumarill, so ever since then, a lot of people have been looking at my Azumarill, and the first thing that comes to their mind, and like 85% of the time that only comes to their mind is belly drum, and I, 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 I think the only other time that I ran belly drum was against Patters, and it was like, what, week 7? <laughs> so 7 weeks in, I didn't run belly drum anymore, it just, and expecting Mo, um, I do expect him to bring the Quillfish, and the uh, Chansey, um, just to, and as well, maybe low key Rotom Cut just to prevent me from getting off. Um, what is it? This Belly Drum. Because the nice thing about Rotom Cut is, is he's resist my priority move, right? Check it. So he could literally be some type of weird ass defensive Rotom Cut and try and get a Will O Wisp off on my uh, Zoomerill. I'd still be doing a lot of damage because I go to plus six with the Will O Wisp. I think I'd be a plus three. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong and I'm doing poor math or not because it cuts in half, which would be three. So somebody correct me if I'm just being like wrong right now, right? Because I that might be poor math. It's like 227 hours I'm recording this. That'd be poor math. And if it is, I apologize. I'm gonna KO so bad after this. But uh, essentially, uh, the thing should be doing a lot of damage, essentially. Um, I brought Assault Vest just because of the fact that I can stop Volcarona Sweep. Because um, Volcarona is really, really scary. Like, Volcarona is really, really, really terrifying. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm literally terrified of this Volcarona. Uh, because Volcarona, again, is the only thing that could um, 
really sweep successfully on his team versus my team. You know, with team matchup, I feel like I can handle Swampert um, a lot better than um, my my doubts are telling me. But essentially, with uh, this is Zoomerill, and this is the spread that I have. Uh, if we're gonna look at damage cost right now, which you guys can't see, it's on my other monitor. But if we're gonna look at that right now, if he's at plus two, Giga Drain still doesn't one shot. At plus two, Giga Drain does not one shot. And that's max special attack. Timid. And that would be like, I literally put in uh, leftovers or lumberry, is what I did. Um, cause, th cause Thunder Wave, you know, I know he ran that against Kristen. I built this team for fucking Kristen. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I can definitely see that. Like, he may put in Lumberry to try and prevent me from getting a Thunder Wave off from my Zapdos or Sloking. Um, he could run Leftovers just cause if he's like a, a Roost set to gain back more HP. All I know is that plus two max special attack Timid, he is not one-shotting my Azuma from this spread that I have right now. It's doing 69 to 82, and that's plus two Giga Drain, which is the hardest thing that you can hit me with. Um, since I'm a cell vested, uh, whereas my Aqua Jet is 75 to 90, so after rocks, it's a guaranteed one shot. Um, after rocks, knockoff is a guaranteed one shot. Um, after rocks, player of is not a guaranteed one shot. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Ooh, that raspy voice! Time to hit the sheets after this. But essentially, this Volcarona is very, very, very scary. But the nice thing about it is, though, is one, I can put up rocks, and two. Uh, I can use Zoomerill. Guess what? I'm betting 50 on it right now. And you guys peep. I'm betting 50 on it right now that I will um, aim more long towards knocking out the Volcarona rather than putting up rocks. Watch. I'm a caller right now. I'm a caller right now. I call the Hydreigon Mist, the Draco Meteor almost all the time. We're going to call this too. Sorry, I don't know why I just blew my mind. We're going to call that too. So, uh, there's that. So, this is Zoomerill. is a very good check to this Volcarona. I know Mo's gonna be all giddy and all giggly when he gets plus two Quiver Dance. Um, I'm gonna instantly go right out into my Azumarill because the thing about it is too, it's into the 75 to 90, it's not a guaranteed one shot. The nice thing about it is it'll bring it down to the range for a fake out for my Lopping with just one shot. So I won't have to worry about that at all. Um, so there's that. Azumarill's doing a lot of work. As well with the Assault Vest, I can maybe potentially stop him from running like a Scarf Special Attack in Jirachi or a Life Force Special Attack in Jirachi. Because special, special Attack in Jirachi really does do a number to my team with Psychic, Thunderbolt, U-Turn, uh, and like Flash Cannon, something of the sorts like that. Um, I don't know why Flash Cannon, you Shadow Ball if anything, yeah. Um, Psychic, Thunderbolt, U-Turn, Shadow Ball, something like that, yeah. Something like I guess something along the lines of like that, you know, I could go more in depth with that. Maybe Hidden Power Fire too, just for my uh, Fortress, but Thunderbolt should just 2 KO that with Life Orb, so that's not something to be really too worried about there. Um, special Attack on Jirachi could be a little annoying, that's a .5 right there is Jirachi, I just said 2.5, the .5 is Jirachi, because Jirachi doesn't give a shit about Pokemon. Jirachi literally abuses everything that's broken in Pokemon in terms of RNG, and shows everybody that Pokemon will never be competitive, as, t as uh, this TCG and BG see that are freaking esports f uh next up we got this cool ass fortress though um i like this fortress a lot Ooh, yeah Ooh, i'm glad i caught that Ooh. Ooh. i don't really care where i put the eight I, I at this point i don't care i know eight doesn't change anything putting eight in investments level 50 doesn't because i could just so simply do four look at that it doesn't change anything but I, I just don't care. I don't want to put it. I don't want to put in special attack. I'm gonna be honest. I don't. You know what? There's still four left. I'm not putting it in speed. Forget this, man. It's just gonna stay there. I don't care. You know what? No. We'll just leave the four behind. I don't even like the number four. <laughs> Fuck that number four. Uh, we got this fortress dub this week. It's a really cool fortress, actually. I don't think you'll expect it. Uh, Pain Split Fortress. Uh, what Painful Fortress can do is 1v1 versus an, a uh, physically offensive Crobat. I can literally wear it down, if not knock it out, with Pain Split, Rocky Helmet damage, plus the South Rock damage, plus a Volt Switch if I just want to get out of there eventually. Um, so I can literally wear it down like that. Um, I can work around if he wants to Roost up as well, to where I could just Volt Switch out and go straight into the Zapdos, go straight out into the Slow King. Um, essentially, yeah. Both of those things are my two best checks to this Crobat. Because Crobat, again, is a little scary, too. Uh, especially versus what I brought this week. 
Um, just versus my team in general. Like, I'd have to bring Lantern, if anything, to stop that thing. But otherwise, uh, Crobat's a little scary, so I'm going to have to watch out for that. But after that, just in Slow King, if I were to lose those two, then Crobat would be very, very, very scary. Um, but I still have Fake Out, and I still have Aqua Jet Azumarill, as well as the Hydreigon, uh, which is... We'll get more in, deep, in depth with it, but it's Scarfed. Um, so we'll get more in depth with that later on, but uh, essentially this thing is basically wearing down a lot of his mons. Uh, its goal is to put up rocks because of Volcarona. Um, it's good against the Jirachi as well, especially Rotom Cut. And uh, I are probably thinking Rotom Cut isn't weak to rocks, so why would it be like that, Double N? Ha! <laughs> I'm glad you asked! When you have a pivot Pokemon like Rotom Cut, or other pivot Pokemon in the future, and all we think about this, when they constantly come in and out, in and out, in and out, rocks are very good for them as well, because it's bringing them down to a point to where you can either one-shot them with a certain move, or two-shot them with a certain move, Basically, you're getting chip damage which is going to be very vital in the long run. And Rotom Cut, a Pokemon that really doesn't have the world's best reliable recovery. I think its best recovery is Pain Split, because all the Rotom forms get that. That's really it. So, now you know. If you don't know, now you know, nigga. But yeah, essentially, this Fortress is going to be here to do a lot of damage. It's basically going to be Suicide. I really don't need it that much. Um, it can't do much to his team. Um, it can do a lot to, to the Jirachi if he decides to be Iron Head, uh, especially if he decides to bring Sinchino. I remember when I used to ladder up in uh, RU and BW1 and BW2, and I used to be, um, I used to literally be like the best RU player. Because uh, I would literally be sitting at number one from time and time and time again in the number one ladder spot. I would always have Rocky Helmet, Rough Skin, Physically Defensive, Drudagon, and this would always one shot. Um, it would always one shot obnoxious King's Rock ass Sinchino or Silk Scarf Sinchino. Uh, it always kill itself because he's literally getting the Rough Skin and the Rocky Helmet damage towards him, and I'm so bulky to where I'm taking all five of them. Skilling is guaranteed to get them all, so he's literally killing himself so you decided to bring this in Chino well buddy guess what You're killing yourself well no he's not if he's live for it maybe but um, even still no I just would have to end up killing it with a, uh, a full switch if anything because I'm not Ruskin so I won't be able to allow him to kill himself but yeah this fortress should be doing a lot of work I have to play carefully with this fortress though because he's very free setup fighter both for the Jirachi uh, free setup fighter for the uh, Jirachi if he's calm mind free setup fighter for the Volcarona Free setup fodder for the Swampert because then I can allow him to get power up punches off. Free setup fodder for the Cobalion to make its free SD, sub, sub SD. Um, free sub, especially free setup fodder for this Miltank. Curse Miltank is obnoxious. I would know. I ran into the NU ladder and I hit like number 35 with it. And this is Oris meta. I hit like number 35 with it on stream at one point. Um, and then Quillfish as well. If he decides to be a Swords Dance Quillfish. But I fuck fuck Quillfish, man. <laughs> fuck that thing. Uh, we got this week a different Zapdos. We decided to go complete offensive raw Zapdos this week. All four moves left over, so I'm not gonna really rely on Roost there. New Zapdos, when I looked at his team, I looked at it as a lot of work. Um, so Zapdos is going to be doing a lot of damage towards uh, his team. Um, it has Heat Waves. It's, it's just coverage-wise. Zapdos is so good in terms of coverage that he literally covers like almost all 12 of his mons. Like, the only ones he doesn't cover are the fat pink mons. And those ones are just a little scary. Otherwise, everybody that isn't Miltank and or Chansey, it literally covers and can take care of with ease. I uh, put in Static for the off chance. Um, not even the off chance. I know 100% guarantee that he is bringing this with some Swampert. I know 100% that he is. And if I get lucky enough and I get this 30% uh, chance to paralyze the Swampert, because Static can paralyze ground types since it's slowing them down, uh, the nice thing about that is, is I can stop him from Swift Swimming, so I won't be that, like, scared anymore, you know? I can do damage and the Slow King can come out then. Well, this is in terms of if I lose my checks to the Swampert, to where if I were to lose, um... If I were to lose the uh, the Slow King, especially um, even the Azumarill, I would be in a huge predicament. Then, if I lose my Water types, that's why I brought two Water types to because of that Swampert. Because of that, um, because Swampert is also very scary. Um, so, yeah, you know it's really scary to my team right now. Now that I look at it, Rotom Cut, like a Specs Rotom Cut. What comes in on a Thunderbolt? <laughs> If I Dragon goes down, like that Rotom cut will be a problem. The nice thing about it though is it'll be specs. If he's scarfed, um, I could just, I guess, live. Most if he's scarfed, I can most definitely live a little better with my Azumarill, so we're good there. So a self Azumarill still could do something to it. I guarantee live a Thunderbolt, guarantee live a Leaf Blade. Leaf Blade? Huh? 
I mean, Rotom Cut, uh... What am I talking? Leaf Storm! Jesus, man! It does like 74 to 89. I just calculated it up, just to double check. Thunderbolt is a guaranteed 2 shot, 53 min. Uh, with my assault vest spread. Um, but the nice thing about it is, though, is that the combination of Aqua Jet and Player of actually knock it out to where Player of 70 does minimum of 72, Aqua Jet does minimum of 16. Um, so if I get min rolls, he lives guaranteed. Um, but if I get high rolls or mid rolls, um, 84, 19.2, do the math. Do the math. He's literally dead. He's literally gonna die then. So, yeah, there's that. Um, but this Aptos has a lot of coverage, so it's doing a lot of work against his team. Uh, if he wait for the Jirachi, I bring an ancient power this week. If I get the boost, I swear to God. But I'm the world's most unluckiest guy, so I will not get the boost. Um, like I said, the fat pink mons being Miltank and Chansey are literally the best checks to the Zapdos. They stop me completely. They shut me down completely. So if he doesn't bring those, they will be the biggest smile on my face. They will literally be the biggest smile on my face if he doesn't bring those. Uh, Crobat, I wall and I do damage to. Uh, Swampert, he can't earthquake me. And if there's no rain, I should be okay. I can guarantee take one ice punch, one waterfall to where I can just get the hidden power grass off. Maybe not speed it. Um, so I should be able to just knock it out. Uh, again, with these Cobalion, I wall it again. Both stab moves um, outside of if he wants to run like Stone Edge, which he more than likely probably will carry Stone Edge. Um, I can simply just go for a on that. I can get uh, Initiative Volt Switch off on that and go right on to my Slow King then. Uh, and if I've checked that I want to go out in with it, he way for this Rotom Cut. Uh, Sinchino is a frail ass bastard. I will literally murder that bitch with an Ancient. I will spam Ancient Power on it and you will miss every single Rock Blast. Scum! I hate Sinchino. I hate that thing. Um, do I even need to say cool fish? I'm a Zapdos for God's sakes. Again with the mill tank, the fat pink mons, the 100% stop the Zapdos. Uh, live part is very frail. I think it's just one shot with the Volt Switch. Um, and then <laughs> Mantine. Yeah, Wakan Berry Mantine. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get bodied by that Mantine. Sheer cold Wakan Berry. <laughs> um, but yeah, this Zapdos has a lot of coverage against all 12 of his mons. So I should be okay with that. Harambe, my slow king. Another a uh, uh, rocky helmet user that I'm bringing again this week. Uh, he literally, again, takes a lot of, lot of, lot of hits. I can't stress that enough. They've taken so many hits. Again, another Pokemon that I'm bringing for the Swampert, because Swampert is very scary. Uh, I'm also bringing it as well for a Curse Mill Tank, just in case if I can try and get a Burn on it. But the thing about Curse Mill Tank is they usually go, like, uh, Curse Milk Drink Heal Bell Body Slam. Um, but a good check to that would be a Ghost type. But the thing about that is, though, is that Mill Tank learns Scrappy. So, no. It would not, you know, most mill tanks that do it go thick fat, that way that they can be able to take moves um, from, I don't know if they changed up some things in the end meta, but I know they'll take moves uh, for a bunch of fire types, Magmordar especially, it just makes it to where Magmordar, we can just set up fodder, Magmordar, and miss a focus blast, um, other fire types off the top of my head, <laughs> Pyroar, yeah, Pyroar, 100% Pyroar, I don't know if there's any other relevant fire types in the anime outside of those. I'm probably stupidly missing one. <laughs> um, but yeah, this low king essentially, I'm not going to stay in though and sit there and just let this thing set up. Um, if he doesn't reveal heal bell, then good, but he more than likely will have heal bell. And even if I don't know if he has heal bell or not, I won't risk that. I will go right to his Azumarill if I see uh, both Miltank and or Chansey. I'll literally 100% go out right to Azumarill. Um, this is if I have rocks, of course, so I wouldn't have to be that afraid of Volcarona. The nice thing about it, too, is his only hazard removal, uh, I think it's two, it's a Defog Mantine and a Defog Crobat, and what's really poor and weak about his hazard removal mons is that they are also weak to hazards, so they're taking, like, 25% to hazards, and the nice thing about Mantine is he can't learn Roost, but the thing about Crobat is, is you can apply pressure to not make him Roost, or apply pressure to force him to Roost on the risk that I may overpredict. so... Momentum! Pressure! Right there. But yeah, no, this Loki's doing a lot of work. Uh, Sashlock's in good coverage as well there. Uh, mainly for Quillfish, um, but it also hits the Crobat and Cobalion just as hard. Scald actually does more on Cobalion, so I will always go for Scald on that. Honestly, looking at his team, if he decides not to bring the Mantine, I will more than likely 95.9% .9 of the time go for Scald. And then the other, like... What? 4.9%. 
I'll just go for uh, Psy Shock <laughs> or Slack Off or Grass Knot only if the Swampert. It's only for the Swampert. Now, I know that sounds stupid, but that's how threatening that Pokemon is. When usually in draft format, when you bring one move dedicated just to one Pokemon, it's pretty ballsy and crazy because that one Pokemon they don't even bring, that's one or two, It's they play poorly with it and it dies instantly. Then it's just like you just wasted a whole slot. You know, I could be running Flamethrower and hit the, the Cobal Rotom Cut, if anything. Um, and the uh, Jirachi. So there's that, but no, I I, I, I really I really have trust in this because that Mega Swampert literally can run house in my team. Look at him, look at my team right now. And if I were to lose um, my Zoomerl and my Sloking, look at my team right now. If I were to go back to all 12 of my mods, Look at my team right now. What comes in on a Rain Dance Waterfall? Nope. 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 Uh, Hydreigon. Nope. Uh, nope. Because I'm pretty sure I'll, I can't do shit back to it, but I think uh, Vortex might be. No, 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 no. I'm underestimating. Nope. Darman. Nope. Uh, Slow King most definitely can. Azuma most definitely can. Hoopa. Nope. Uh, Verizion can, but all he has to do is literally click Ice Punch right after one waterfall. Um, Lantern. Oh, I can go like Air Balloon Water Absorb. <laughs> He'll ice punch freeze me. Uh, Pillow, nope, and Kickleon, nope. So essentially, I had to look at what I had to do, and I think bringing Grass Knight is something that I do have something that I do have to do. And last but not least, we are bringing this Hydreigon. It's level 70, only because I needed to test the legality for it. For the I needed to test it essentially. So like I bring the Lopin and the 66 for wanting to run high jump kick. But we're bringing Acnologia, the Hydreigon. The boy that never comes through, our shy Hydreigon who hasn't really bonded with us yet. Every time he always gets hacked out, he always gets para hacks, he always gets burned, he always gets frozen, he always misses his Draco, he misses his flamethrower slash fire blast. I originally had fire blast on his Hydreigon, but I changed it to flamethrower literally last minute. Because I will miss it. I'm even terrified of running Heat Wave right now. But I needed the hidden bright grass, so I had to I had to take the risk. Uh, with this Hydra though, he's dishing out a lot of damage once his seal mons are gone, and as well as the obvious fat pink mons. Uh, nobody in this team comes in on a Draco Meteor. Like literally nobody at all can come in on a Draco Meteor. Nobody at all. Um, Crobat, I think, has a chance to uh, just die. Um, Swampert. Swampert should actually be taking a lot of considerable amount of damage um, from this. Uh, guys, well, if we're gonna look at it right now, Draco Meteor actually does not one-shot Timid Scarfed uh, Rotom. It does 81 to 96. That is so stupid, man. But rocks, rocks, rocks. That's where rocks come into play. Um, if you guys want to look up another calc, I uh, wanted to look up against Volcarona. Obviously, we're gonna consider it though with rocks because rocks. Uh, it does 60 to 72, so it does over half. Which after rocks, that's what Volcarona will be at half guaranteed, and that easily one-shots that as well. Um, and Bug Buzz guaranteed one shots me, so I'm only gonna Draco Meteor if the rocks are, are up. If not, then I'm most definitely not. Um, I guess if you guys want to look up another thing too that we also could do, we could also look up into consideration of. No, because that's it. Everything else I know for a fact one shots or dies. I know everything else more than likely just dies. Uh, if we're gonna look at Crobat right now. Um, yeah, if we look at Crobat right now. Looking at my buddy Crobat, huh? What's poppin' with you, Crobat? It does 81 to 96 yet again. So with rocks, it is definitely one-shotting that 100%. So that's really nice. We're we're getting damage off. So it either has it, it's very close to one-shotting, if not one-shotting. So a Dragon, I love you, beautiful bastard. I might draft him again. He's cool to use. Unfortunately, he has not been working out for me a lot this season, but I will make it work. I will make it work. Uh, but this is the squad we're bringing up against the Heat of Mo, Mo Heat. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'd love to feedback down below. We're going to be fighting him tomorrow, but I'm recording this video like Wednesday. It is Wednesday, my dudes. <laughs> Alright, okay, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you guys for the support, as always, and thank you for watching. It means a lot for me. I'm going to get out of here. I am the Nexus. Thank you for watching, and I am out.